Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My project today was shared on my Facebook Live event called Spotlight with Lisa. I featured the narrow note cards and envelopes and a Mother's Flare stamp set. Two products I think are quite sleepers in the Occasions catalog. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like copies of the current catalogs, I'd be happy to send you complimentary ones. All you have to do is leave a comment below. If you're here from YouTube, you'll be able to find the pictures for today's project, along with cutting dimensions and a PDF tutorial link over on my blog. I've put the link to my blog right in the description of this video below, making it easy for you to find. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. Here's a close up of the narrow note card that we're going to be making, but make sure you stick with me to the end because I have other samples of note cards using this exact same stamp set. And it's called A Mother's Flare. Lots of really cute solid images for quick, easy cards. Like I said in the introduction, I really think that this stamp set is kind of a sleeper in the Occasions catalog. So you'll find it here on page 46. You can purchase it either in wood mount or in clear mount. The other thing we're going to be using are the narrow note cards and envelopes. You'll find those in the Occasions catalog as well, and I kind of think they're hidden down here at the bottom. There is a notation about them, but there's not a full picture of them, which makes them easy to pass by. There are 20 thick Whisper White note cards that are already pre-cut and pre-scored for you, and they include the 20 envelopes that go with them. A great deal at only $8. I'm actually going to do some stamping on a piece of Whisper White cardstock. I'm using the basic black archival ink pad. This pad is a little slow to dry, so I'm gonna stamp my image ahead of time and let that sit while I work on the base of the card. I've pulled out the image of the high heel shoe with the flower. I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up. That's gonna get stamped right here in the center of the cardstock. I'll set that aside to dry. Even though the narrow note card is already scored, I always like to go ahead and fold it in half and use my bone folder just to reinforce that crease. I've cut a piece of designer series paper the exact same size as the front of this card. And this is from the whole lot of lovely designer series paper. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna add adhesive to the back side because I wanna use the polka dot side. And like most of the Stampin' Up! designer series papers, you're gonna find that they're double-sided. So there's beautiful print images on both sides. I'm being very generous because I wanna make sure that it's not going to lift since it's gonna cover the entire base of the card. So I'm just going to line that the best that I can and go ahead and press. Coming back to my image, I'm going to add a little bit of detail to that flower. I'm going to be using a blender pen and my real red ink pad. So I'm going to flip the pad over and I'm going to give it a squeeze. We made the bottom of this case flexible so that you can actually create a pool of ink inside the lid. The blender pen has two tips. They're identical, so it doesn't matter which one that you use. There is a glycerin formula in the center that moistens the tips that will turn this ink and this brush into a watercolor type palette. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of color from here, but you can see that it's very concentrated. So I'm going to come down here and I'm actually going to thin it out just a little bit so I can control it. I don't want my coverage too thick or too thin, and by actually thinning out the ink, it allows me to be able to make it dark where I want it and light where I want it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in my flower. Now I wanna change colors, so it's important that you clean off the blender pen. To do that, you're gonna hold it horizontally on your scratch paper, and you're gonna place it down, and you're actually gonna turn, or actually spin, the blender pen so that you can get the ink off all the way around the circumference. The ink will have a tendency to seep down into this area. So by holding it horizontally, you're actually able to make sure that you've got it clean as far down as possible. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna do this with the tip because just like a magic marker would over time, that will become frayed and larger, which is gonna make very difficult to get in these little detailed areas. Make sure you cap it when you're finished and you're gonna store it horizontally. We're gonna go ahead and change colors now. I'm gonna add some colors here for the leaf and I'm using pear pizzazz and I'll do that exact same thing I just did with the real red ink. So I'm gonna pick up some of that color here, gonna thin it out a little bit on here and then I'm gonna fill in my leaves. 
The other great thing about the black archival ink, which is what we've used, is we're going to be able to go right over it without having to worry about bleeding. One more time before I put it away, I'm going to go ahead and clean off that blender pen, turning it on my scratch paper until it runs clean. So then I know it's good to use the next time I take it out. The next thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of detail to this image. I want it to coordinate with the polka dot front on my card. I'll be using the Stampin' Chalk marker. I've got a scrap piece here of basic black cardstock, and I want to get the pen started so that it'll flow very nicely for me to make the polka dots that I want to use. Very important, you don't want to smash the tip because you need that chiseled tip in order to make those fine dots. So I'm just going to tap it here and get it started to see it's flowing well. And then I'm just going to add small dots to the shoe randomly to give it a pattern. The chalk marker will take a couple seconds for it to dry, so you'll need to be patient and let it sit. Just ahead of the video, I used this beautiful Real Red Solid Ribbon. This was carried over from the Holiday Catalog, and I made a tiny bow. Now I'm going to give you a couple tips on how I did that. Make sure you start with an ample amount of ribbon. I like to keep it on the spool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a loop, and I'm going to cinch it, and then I'm going to come around. I am not concerned that it's going to be out of proportion to begin with. Hold the knot and I'm going to pull this and I'm going to pull that tightly by pulling on the loops. By holding it in the center, I can readjust the loop size without losing all the tension in my bow. And then once I'm satisfied with it, I can just go ahead and cut my ends, which is exactly what I did on this little tiny bow here. I thought that my shoe needed a little bit of decoration, so I'm going to bring in a glue dot. I'm going to peel that back, and I'm going to take the center of that bow, and I'm going to place it right here on top of that glue dot. The glue dot is just slightly larger than I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my paper piercing tool to help me pick it up, because I don't want to distort the bow itself. And can you see how it's a little bit long here? So I'll flip this over, and I'll fold it from the back, and then I can use my paper piercing tool to help me manipulate this. So I'm going to add that little bow right here to the back of my shoe for a little bit of dimension. I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to add adhesive to the back, because I'm going to add this to a layer of real red cardstock that I've cut here. Remember, you're going to find all the cutting dimensions for this project over on my blog. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to add some dimensionals to the back to add some elevation to this panel on the front of my narrow note card. I'm also going to add one in the center because I'm cognizant of the mail meter when it goes through that at the post office. If you have difficulty getting off that paper backing, take your fingernail and press it in the center of the paper. That's going to lift the outside edge, making it easier for you to remove. I'm going to add that to the center of my narrow note card and then just press that in place. Isn't that adorable and so simple? Let me show you the other cards I made as part of a set using this exact same stamp set and the same designer series paper stack. The one great thing about the narrow note cards, of course, is the coordinating envelopes. Cute little rounded back. Now these are not mailable sizes, but they're great to add with a gift box or a gift bag, or if you're hand carrying a plant as a gift to someone, um, as a hostess gift or a get well gift. This is a vintage hat. I don't know if you can notice that here, but I've added some metallic threads with a metallic enamel dot here for the center of the hat. Added some label work here with the greeting. All of this is from that exact same stamp set. So here's the next one. And look at that adorable card. I've added small pearls here around the handle of that purse. Add a little bit of a doily here for a feminine flair. The last one is this. That Mother's Day greeting is also inside that stamp set, but can be easily substituted with other words that are in there. This is a small piece of washi tape to help bring out that teapot image. So I've got these four cards, plus the one we created today. And guess what? I've got one more thing for you. I created a narrow note card box. So this box actually opens up by pulling the ribbon. So I've designed the box bottom. 
and the box lid. This is that same designer series paper and you can see that all these fit very nicely inside of here making it a great gift set whether it be for Mother's Day or for a shower or for a friend just as a birthday gift. These can all be placed inside and given. I had a feeling that you might want all the instructions for this so that you can duplicate it. I've created a PDF tutorial for you. This 10 page tutorial will give you step-by-step -step instructions including pictures and supplies on how to make every single one of the cards as well as the box itself. This is available for purchase for $9 in my project PDF tutorial library. Click on the link here in the description bar below if you're here from YouTube or if you're here on my blog click on the online classes tab. There you'll find a drop down for project PDF tutorials and if you click that it'll navigate you to my tutorial library where you'll be able to find all the tutorials including this one. I'm so glad you joined me today for the project. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.